Although the general functions of proteins identified by sequence searches may be predicted by analogy with known proteins, the precise in vivo roles of such new proteins may be unclear in the absence of mutant forms of the corresponding genes. In this section, we will look at several ways for disrupting the normal function of a specific gene in the genome of an organism. Analysis of the resulting mutant phenotype often helps reveal the in vivo function of the gene and its encoded protein. Two basic approaches underlie these gene inactivation techniques. First, replacing a normal gene with other sequences or knockout. And second, introducing an allele whose encoded protein that inhibits the function of the target protein, also known as dominant negative. Knockout mice in which a specific gene is disrupted are a powerful experimental system for studying mammalian development, behavior, and physiology. They also are useful in studying the molecular basis of certain human genetic diseases. Gene-targeted knockout mice are generated by a two-stage procedure. In the first stage, a DNA construct containing a disrupted allele of a particular target gene is introduced into embryonic stem cells. These cells, which are derived from the blastocyst, can be grown in culture through many generations. When exogenous DNA is introduced into embryonic stem cells, random insertion via non-homologous recombination occurs much more frequently than gene-targeted insertion via homologous recombination. To select for cells in which homologous gene-targeted insertion occurs, the recombinant DNA construct introduced into embryonic stem cells needs to include two selectable marker genes. One of these genes, NeoR, which confers G418 resistance, is inserted within the target gene X, thereby disrupting it. The other selectable gene, the thymidine kinase gene from herpes simplex virus or TKHSV, confers sensitivity to gancyclovir, a cytotoxic nucleotide analog. It is inserted into the construct outside the target gene sequence. Only embryonic stem cells that undergo homologous recombination can survive in the presence of both G418 and gancyclovir. In these cells one allele of gene X will be disrupted. In the second stage in production of knockout mice, embryonic stem cells heterozygous for a knockout mutation in gene X are injected into a recipient wild-type mouse blastocyst, which subsequently is transferred into a surrogate pseudopregnant female mouse. The resulting progeny will be chimeras, containing tissues derived from both the transplanted embryonic stem cells and the host cells. If the embryonic stem cells also are homozygous for a visible marker trait, such as coat color, then chimeric progeny in which the embryonic stem cells survived and proliferated can be identified easily. Chimeric mice are then mated with mice homozygous for another allele of the marker trait to determine if the knockout mutation is incorporated into the germ line. Finally, mating of mice, each heterozygous for the knockout allele, will produce progeny homozygous for the knockout mutation. While knockout mouse technology represents a valuable research tool, some important limitations exist. First, about 15% of gene knockouts are developmentally lethal, which means that the genetically altered embryos cannot grow into adult mice. Second, the gene may serve a different function in adults than in developing embryos. Third, mice carrying a germline knockout may have defects in numerous tissues or die before the developmental stage of interest. And fourth, Knocking out a gene also may fail to produce an observable change in a mouse or may even produce different characteristics from those observed in humans in which the same gene is inactivated. For example, mutations in the p53 gene are associated with more than half of human cancers and often lead to tumors in a particular set of tissues. However, when the p53 gene is knocked out in mice, the animals develop tumors in a different array of tissues. To address these problems, mouse geneticists have devised a clever technique to inactivate target genes in specific types of somatic cells or at particular times during development. This technique employs site-specific DNA recombination sites, called LOXP sites, and the enzyme CRE that catalyzes recombination between them. The LOXP CRE recombination system is derived from bacteriophage P1, but this site-specific recombination system also functions when placed in mouse cells. An essential feature of this technique is that expression of Cree is controlled by a cell-type-specific promoter. 
In Lox P. Cree mice, inactivation of the gene of interest, X, occurs only in cells in which the promoter controlling the Cree gene is active. To generate the conditional knockout mice, two Lox P sites are inserted on each side of an essential exon of the target gene X, by homologous recombination, producing a Lox P mouse. Since the Lox P sites are in introns, they do not disrupt the function of X. The Cree mouse carries one gene X knockout allele and an introduced Cree gene from bacteriophage P1 linked to a cell type specific promoter. The Cree gene is incorporated into the mouse genome by non homologous recombination and does not affect the function of other genes. In the Lox P Cree mice that result from crossing, Cree protein is produced only in those cells in which the promoter is active. Thus these are the only cells in which recombination between the LOXP sites catalyzed by Cree occurs, leading to deletion of X and 2. Since the other allele is a constitutive gene X knockout, deletion between the LOXP sites results in complete loss of function of gene X in all cells expressing Cree. By using different promoters, researchers can study the effects of knocking out gene X in various types of cells. For certain genes, the difficulties in producing homozygous knockout mutants can be avoided by use of an allele carrying a dominant negative mutation. These alleles are genetically dominant, that is, they produce a mutant phenotype even in cells carrying a wild-type copy of the gene. But unlike other types of dominant alleles, dominant negative alleles produce a phenotype equivalent to that of a loss-of-function mutation. Useful dominant negative alleles have been identified for a variety of genes and can be introduced into cultured cells by transfection or into the germ line of mice or other organisms. In both cases, the introduced gene is integrated into the genome by non-homologous recombination. Such randomly inserted genes are called transgenes. The cells or organisms carrying them are referred to as transgenic. Transgenes carrying a dominant negative allele usually are engineered so that the allele is controlled by a regulated promoter, allowing expression of the mutant protein in different tissues at different times. As noted above, the random integration of exogenous DNA via non-homologous recombination occurs at a much higher frequency than insertion via homologous recombination. Because of this phenomenon, the production of transgenic mice is an efficient and straightforward process. In summary, transgenic animal technology has resulted in a plethora of animal models for biomedical research. Our understanding of some of the important issues regarding the mechanisms of disease has dramatically advanced in recent years through exploitation of these techniques to generate transgenic mice. In particular, the generation of mice with targeted mutations in genes encoding proteins of interest has proved to be a useful way of elucidating the function of these gene products in vivo. Transgenic mouse models have provided great insight into the complex events contributing to cellular dysregulation that can lead to many diseases such as cancer, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, and many more.